my favorite time of the day. This is Somebody like breakfast, somebody like lunch. But this is favorite, 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 favorite time of the Time of day. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you because this today, this Saturday, is my favorite time to share your word with anybody who might want to know it. Thank you that it doesn't matter what day it is. And Father, perfect timing, perfect timing. What a time that we can stop the hustle and bustle of life and really just say, okay, where do I want to spend life eternity, eternally? And you gave us an opportunity to get it together. This is just an opportunity to say the test is coming. I need you to prepare because I want you to pass. You are such a good God. And why I feel the sense of urgency to do it every day Number one, I got time. And another, because I'm in love with your word. And I thank you for everybody that would listen and take heed. And Father, I pray that the ears that the enemy has stopped up, that they would be loose today, the tongues that are tied, that they would do what is supposed to, whether it be silent or when they do speak, that it speaks according to your word. And let my mouth be a vehicle that will say exactly what I've learned through you as I set upon the reapers who have gone before me. And I get a chance to come behind them and verify, confirm in my way of bringing it, the written word of God. Thank you for your educational system in your word. Father, bless every listener, every home that allowed this word to penetrate it. Because we need it. And uh, thank you for your complete plan of salvation. Thank you for your complete preserved word for us. You've got so much patience. And I know you have for me. Thank you for teaching me daily how to slow down, not be anxious, and showing me how to forgive according to how you did it in your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, this chapter is chapter uh, 19 of, of 2 Samuel. Chapter 19, <clears throat> God has allowed us to come from Genesis. Well, I say Genesis, but we did go uh, 365 days in 2020. And then part of 2020. Uh, um, how the hell is this about? Every time I, anyway, <clears throat> every time I um, I don't know what I was getting ready to say, but I do know we got another day that we could um, uh, um, get more of what we have already been traveling through, and to get here and be in Second Samuel, the chap chapter nineteen is a, it's a blessing. Um, 
I was looking at, I'm looking at the fivefold ministries and I wanted to know more about that. And with that um, understanding, I think the last one is a teacher. And I really think that a lot of us have lived off the preaching. And the preaching is what draws us to the word. But it's supposed to be connected to um, the rest of the ministries. To get people in. And I think where we got stuck is that we got stuck at preaching. And preaching is the invitation or the commercial of what is to be taught. So when we came out the street and we heard of some good news, we ran in and we got stuck there. And that's where we've been for the last a long time. So I just, I'm learning, you know, that we have, we have to be taught, we have to be educated. And we got, I got, I got to do more than get you to come to Jesus. And when you come to Jesus, you got to have your pencil and your paper and your book as he unfolds the story, because this is just one complete uh, story about a man that's worthy enough for us to watch every move that he made. So now that God is teaching me that there's a place, but we have to work together in the point that we understand God's total place is that somebody calls you to or gets you in, into the body. And then the thing that's going to last and make us uh, ready to, um, ready to pull down strongholds is the word of God. And I'll say this before I get into it. Chapter 19 is, is, is long, but it's wealthy. It's full of wealth. It is God's plan in the educational system is for somebody to call you in and then for somebody to teach you. And the reason why you need to be taught is because there are things that's going on that you're going to know how to confront. You're going to have to know how to confront those things. And it's going to, it's going to take more than I want. You know, where I hear a lot of people say people need encouraging. Now, people need to know what the word says. Because if you came to encourage me, then what part of me are you trying to encourage? You say that you want to encourage me. Encourage me to do what? Encourage me to deal with the fact that I'm lonely. Encourage me to do what? The best thing that we can do for any uh, anybody is to let them hear how the king sounds. And when, the, when we gather people in, I'll sit at the table. I'll get my portion. Somebody else sit at the table. They'll get their portion. Somebody may not, it's not so much encouraging that they need because you're limited to how much you can encourage me. You don't know enough about me. My countenance does not display everything because a lot of people smiling and need a word from the Lord or encouragement, but they're smiling. So how do you pick those that need to be encouraged? Because we got something to cry about all the time. Today we're going to see what David cried. But he needed a rebuke. And so sometimes our tears don't need the ministry of, oh, baby, it's going to be all right. <laughs> I'm in the body of Christ. It's going to be all right. Now what I need to know is my next assignment. So I want to say that we got to get past it. And I think we hide behind that covering I want to encourage you. We don't, know no, we don't know nothing else to say. That's the truth. So we got to get past, I want to encourage you. Now I want to get you hungry enough to go read this word. So when I'm gone, you can continue to do what I started. And telling you, I can't, I don't have to, I can't stand up before an audience and have all them big words. I need a word to read. I'm not smart enough to get up and, and say big words that I can't pronounce. And you saying them and nobody can pronounce them but you. It sounds real good. I just can't do that. So I have to go to the Father. So if you need somebody to say, baby, it's going to be all right, or somebody to say, and like I was, I wrote something this morning, people say, won't he do it? Won't he do what? You know, the Lord just told me to tell you. No, he didn't. Please don't bring it to me. Because if he told you, I can find it. I know what he sounds like. So I can go look it up. 
So if you come to me telling me what God told you, then I just want to copy. But God, people got a whole lot of things that they say God said. I ran across a, a post on my page. I don't really think they meant to send it to me. And what they're going to do, because nobody in there looked like me. I didn't post nobody looked like me. And they were talking about the hatred of the new administration of the administration of the United States and and how they were gonna boycott these big businesses. But they're gonna let them know that the previous president is still the president. You gotta know the word out of God to deal with people like that. You gotta have something better than what they have because that's all they have. They really believe that. But if I'm just talking to them like, you know, the Lord wanna bless you, and the Lord wanna see you go through it. Mm-mm. I want you to hear a word from God in his entirety, understanding what you're doing is nothing new and what happened to the people that talk just like you. So I got to be able to go back into, you know, the Old Testament where I learned from and show you, so you keep doing that. This is what's going to happen. I know we can just tell them you're going to hell if you do that. We can do that. But what if you can reason with them? What if you had enough intelligence in the word of God that you could sit down and have an educational conversation with somebody that's true about what they say the law of life and they could not see themselves in there and you just happen to just know where it's found and where to point them to. Maybe they may come out of there, but they come out of there on there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord told me to tell you. We got to get educated. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's get some education in chapter 19 because I can't hardly wait to get to chapter 20 because chapter 19 got my eyes open. Oh, this was hard. This, this is kind of late I'm coming on today. I know I'm going to be done by now. All right, so sex, chapter 19 has, and I'm really, I may have to just slow down what I'm doing. I may have to really slow it down because I really, a teacher, as a teacher, you, you have to have something so people can leave with some evidence. I got the word, but I want to break it down in a way that, that if a child walked in the room, they can catch on and, and uh, understand what's going on. Because that definitely, grown people need to know. I know that. We all need to know. All right, today we're going to talk about Joab. We're going to talk about David. Absalom is dead. That's David's son. And David had a hard time dealing with the fact that my son who rose up against me came to put me out of, out of the position of being king. And he won't take my place, but he lost his life. And the people that was following uh uh, Absalom was the most most of Israel. And these are relatives. These are not just enemies. These are relatives. These are brothers. And so Absalom got the chunk of the children of Israel and, a, and, 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 um, and David had a portion. So we got we got 10 to 2. And the 2 really was one is Simeon being small and then Judah being big. So they were all under Judah's name. So we got the game going on 10 to 2. 10, 10 of my relatives against two of my relatives. All about getting rid of David. So we'll be talking about uh, Joab. We will talk about Absalom's name will be mentioned, but he's dead now. So we, we got to talk about him just a tiny bit. Uh, we'll talk about the children of Israel being on the Absalom's when he was trying to kill David and then the ones that st stuck with David. Then we're going to talk about Mephibosheth and we're going to talk about Abishai. I mean, Simei. I don't think Abishai is in here. All of these names are names that believers ought to know. When we talk, we ought to be able to know who Joab was, who, who was uh, Simei and who was Mephibosheth and who, why was the kingdom of God getting ready to come and loose crumbling. Why, who was on David's side? Who was not on David's side? That's the kind of movie we ought to be able to talk. We ought to be able to have, have a good discussion on this. And that's why the word of God is so important. All right, chapter 18 ends with David crying because he got the news that his son was taken. David said to the commanders that he had three of in front of all the people Y'all take care of my boy Absalom. Be deal gently with him. Now, you're talking about how did David get in that mindset? Being the king, people putting their lives on the line 
in your behalf. And the one that you want, the one that started this whole stuff is your son. And you telling these people to go to war. But make sure you don't harm my son. Please be gentle with my son. What kind of mindset is David in? So when we say David had a heart, had, was a man after God's own heart, that's what the word says. Is it, what are we talking about? An average person, how would you answer that? Because today, if God's heart is like David's heart here, then what is the real meaning of David, uh, of God saying that? What's the real meaning of David being a man that had God's heart? What is God's heart? And I think that's what we need to ultimately ask. What is God's heart? What, what is God's ultimate, ultimate purpose? Man's heart in business is to make money. And you got some that make it in a way they communicate well and the people understand their plan of action. In other words, you buy something, you go back to the store, they'll make it good because they, they care more about you coming back than the green money that you spent or the credit card that you use. And then you got some that would do anything to get it. That's what the heart is. That's man's heart. But what does it mean that David having a heart that God said, I use his heart because it represents mine? Okay, is it God's heart that your son starts a war and somebody else's son fight for you and lose their life? <coughs> but your daddy, David, wants um, Absalom saved. Is that a right heart? God talking about. So we got to study the word to find out what is God talking about because he you you can't mean that somebody doing me wrong and I'm taking up for him. So we got to really find out how we have a good healthy discussion like you sit around with your friends and say as I was reading the word what do you think God meant and then we give examples of something that happened to David and said was that God's heart? Was it God's heart to take uh, a woman and sleep with her and have a husband kill? And now the, your house got to go through the pressure of the sin that you committed because you had no discipline? Is that God's heart? That's David. So evidently, knowing who God is, what was... What was it about David that made God say, that's my heart right there. That's my heart. That's like being married to a man that y'all so, <coughs> you so, you so in one in sync with each other <coughs> until um, it's like, just you, you can finish my sentence or you can write the lyrics to, to the song that I know, that I only know in my head. Or you see your granddaughter and she's, she reminds you so much of somebody that you love and your family says, that's my heart. That's what God said about David. But look at what David did. We got to find out what is God talking about. <coughs> Let's see God. <coughs> Let's see God's heart. Sorry, y'all. Something in you. I got candles blowing. I don't know if that's it or what it is. All right. So the last thing we see, David did not get his, his uh, desire. He asked him to not to harm or deal gently with Absalom. Absalom is the one that was trying to kill him. But David said, in return, I don't want him dead. And so, but he died. He died. He died by his head. And he got stabbed in the heart three times. Absalom did. And he didn't die. And it took 10 guys. Well, ten, I don't know if it took 10 guys, but 10 other guys came and struck him. And then he died. And they buried him. And, um. Uh, that's the end of Absalom, as far as physical. All right, 19, that's, that's chapter um, 18 was the war against Absalom. He lost. And uh, I can just tell you right now, anytime we go against the word of God, you're going to lose. It's just a matter of time. Absalom lost. He was a politician. He won the people over. He got them foolishly to follow behind him. A lot of them got killed. 
he died, and the story goes into chapter 19, and it was told Joab. Joab is the captain of the army. And it was told Joab, comma, behold, comma, the king weeps and mourns for Absalom. Now, yesterday he was crying for Absalom. Now he at home. And the word got out David, and they're still crying over Absalom. And the victory that day was turned into mourning to all the people. Now, here it is. David is crying as the king. And the people that went and put their lives at risk are now it's like, God, what is going on? It says, and the victory that day was turned into mourning unto all the people, unto all the people. For the people heard say that day how the king was grieved for his son. David still whining, crying over his son. And I can imagine that. So because your son was wrong and he was trying to kill you. And you grieve because no, your son separate. Is he is he grieving because he's he would never see his son again? Is that the depth of what he's crying for, or is he just being a father that's saying that's my son, like a natural person would feel if they actually had a son? And I understand that because <clears throat> I'm not gonna make David sound any better than what's written in this book. But imagine having a son. You, you, y'all didn't even talk. Y'all didn't talk for five years. David and his boy didn't even talk for five years. He came back. They reconciled. David kissed him. And the next story, the unraveling of this story, is his son wanted to kill him. Is that God's heart? To mourn and grieve for a son that wanted to kill you? Let's just follow this. Is it because... Is it, is it God's heart? But let's, let's just, we're going to read David just like he is. We're not going to make anything up. And the people heard that David felt like that and how he was grieving for his son. And the people got them by stealth. In other words, they start walking like this. Y'all yeah, be quiet. Y'all, yeah, shh, don't do that. Now, you just won the war. You just won the Super Bowl. But the quarterback is feeling like, he got some issues. So the whole team is like, you just made all the touchdowns or whatever. I don't, you know, I don't know about the football. But in a way, you, you, you don't get it. It's not matching. We just won this war. We stood in your place. We told you to go home and be still while we go fight for you. And now you're crying over the person we had to kill because he was trying to kill us and you. To get to you. He, he didn't care nothing about us. He was just trying to get to you. But now you in there feeling bad. And the people got them by stealth, in other words, the word says by stealth, S-T-E-A-L-T-H. That day in the city as people being ashamed still away when they flee in battle. In other words, we acting like losers. Our, our king is crying and all of us just, you know, we like, y'all yeah, got to be quiet. In other words, I ain't hungry, lost my appetite. Because the king not feeling right. And the people got them by, but the king covered his face. I can see David laying in the bed in the fetus position. He covered his face, and this is what he was saying. And the king cried with a loud voice, Oh, my son, Absalom, oh, Absalom, my son, my son. Is, 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 is David crying because he know he's going to never see this boy again? He ain't cry like that with that other boy. The first baby that died. The one he slept with Bathsheba, and, the, and that baby got sick. God struck a sickness on the child. The baby lived seven days and David wouldn't eat. And then when he found the boy was dead, David said, give me something to eat. He said, I'm going to him. Is David crying because Absalom is gone to hell? And there's a deep cry because you will never in eternity to see this boy again? Is that why he's crying? Let's keep going. But the king covered his face and the king cried with a loud voice, Oh, my son, Absalom. Oh, my son, Absalom. My son, my son. Do you know that God does not wish that any of us perish? You know it's, it grieves God's heart. And Joab came, and Joab, and Joab came into the house to the king and said, and I'm not saying that that's why David is crying, but I'm just trying to put some thoughts out there. Because it just might be that deep and low down as we are. 
The spirit of God cries when he sees us and we, he knows our fate. I know you're trying to kill me, but I still want somebody to let you live. But they didn't hear my word. They killed you anyway. And now my heart is broken. Imagine that somebody's dead that you will never see again. Then the captain, Joab, Captain Joab came in into the house to the king and said, you have shamed this day the faces of all your servants. You in here acting like you lost your mind. This is, this is Joab talking. Now Joab is working under David. But he's speaking to David as if, if he's to say, I'm in charge. David, if, if, if we don't weep, and I'm just, I'm saying this now because I'm going to flow with it. If we don't weep for the seriousness of people that's being lost, then we don't really, really believe that we don't, these folk are really separated from us. We ought to be weeping so until, and now I'm seeing, oh Lord, if this you flow and flow. I'm seeing that David saw a man that was trying to hurt him. But understanding that I'm asking you to deal gently with him because I know what it's like if you don't. And you want me to get over the fact that I'm hurt. You looking at it like that's my boy. I'm looking at it like it's you. And you being separated from the king. I can't stop crying. I put, a, I put some over my head. That's how bad I feel. We got to get so on an urgent call to get people until there is going, this hell that God is talking about is real. You ought to see the things that people are posting on the internet instead of looking at them and say, well, he's white and he's black and he's the president. We got to do some weeping until the world can understand why are you still crying over this? Because you don't understand my tears ain't about what you're saying is about where you're going to go if you don't stop talking like that. I'm not crying. You, you, you see me crying because you're my brother and you're saying things that normally would hurt a sister. But I'm crying because I know that if you don't stop talking like this, you're going to hell. And to go to hell and be separated from the Father, even Jesus said, just the thought of being separated you for three days made, made my tears drop like blood. Is David crying because he sees something more than we read him? Is God trying to show us this man got in my heart because you understand that I know how wrong you are, but I want somebody to deal with you in a way that you're kind enough to even a wrong person, even about to kill you, that you still can be good to him? Is that what God trying to tell us? Why this boy got a heart like mine? I studied this thing last night and got up this morning. And I was like, God, why is this? Why are you seeing David as after your own heart? Look at what he's doing. And Joab came in the house to the king and said, you have shamed this day the faces of all your servants. Everybody that was walking up behind you, shame because look at you. Joab represented flesh. This is what a natural man would do. This is what I would have done in my flesh. Except God let you see his heart, you won't see it. You'll see Joab is being right. And Joab came into the house of the king and said, came into the house of the who? Joab walked into the house of the king. David represented the, the, all of God's everything as a man. And you walk into my house as the king. You out of order. Let's just see this. And said, thou hast shamed this day the faces of all your servants. You have made the whole church look bad in here crying, which this day have saved your life. We save your life. Which that's naturally what, what actually we would say. And the lives of your sons, you just killed my son, but anyway, and the lives of your daughters and the lives of your wives with S on it. 
and the lives of your concubines, the ones you didn't marry but you still slept with. We covered all your sins. You ought to be glad. You ought to be up shouting for what we did to you. And and and, I, and right now, what if David is saying, oh, that's all that I still got. But I don't want to lose one. I don't, want, I don't want nobody. This is the word of God. I don't want nobody to go to hell. Well, what, Lord, what was I to do? Joab could ask. This boy killing us. And then God said, what if God was saying, I didn't want you to take it. Let me deal with I want to get the most out of him. I had people dying in the woods. I told you I was going to get it. Let me do the revenge. Let me have the vengeance on people. Let it be on me. Let it be, let, let it, let it be, let, let me handle it. But since you did, and I understand we do that, Joel made sense, and he does make natural sense. The king is in here crying like this, and the people in there feeling sad because you crying. And I'm coming to you saying, why would you shame us like this today? We just put our lives on the line for you, and you in here crying? Could God be telling us that it is just that deep? Could he be telling us the tears that David shed over this boy is just that deep? He deserved to die, but, it, but even if you deserve to die, God is saying, do you understand what it does to me to see you die? I understand what it's like to have my song hanging on the cross. He said, Father, let this cup pass for me, but nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Do you understand that the Father had to be separated only? He said, I, I, I let you out of my sight three days, but I got to get you back. Don't mess up now. Don't mess up, son. I want you back. Go do it for him. But Joab is coming in just like I would have. I told God last night. I don't see nothing wrong with Joab. Then I, then I had to tell God, Lord, if I got the spirit of Joab, God, please help me. In all of my righteous understanding of what Joab is doing, I, I agree with him. But Lord, if that's not your heart, where is your heart? Don't hide your heart from me. So this was my cry last night. Don't hide. I don't want to be. I, I don't want to understand Joel better than I do David. I don't want to understand how Joel could see what I saw, and I agree with Joel having put my life on the line. I can see myself doing the same thing. If that's not your heart, then where's your heart? It certainly was not with Joel because you didn't say that. Joab did what we would normally do. I'm going to get you for this. Get about this bed, king. First of all, you out of order. And then Joab said this, and you love your enemies up. And you love your enemies, the people that's trying to kill you, David. You love your enemies and hate your friends. That's what he thought. We're your friends and you hate us. And David is like, <laughs> I got you, particle son, brother. You ain't leave me. It's the one that left me that I cry for. It's the one I don't have anymore. All that you talking about, true that. But you ain't turn your back on me. My son shouldn't have turned his back on me. You can't, you don't, you don't want to, you don't want to do that. If I represent God and I'm God's anointed, and that you love your enemies and hate your friends, but you have declared this day that you regard neither prince nor servant for this day. I perceive, uh, Joy said, I perceive, my flesh perceives. I don't have the understanding of the heart that you have, but what I can put together, that if Absalom had lived and all we had died this day, then it pleased you well. <laughs> Absalom, I mean, Joel, you ever had a son? 
You ever had a son? That's what he could have said. Joy said, you, 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 the way you crying over this boy, you make us think like we were just wasted our time. And God is saying today, you just don't know how much I love you. <laughs> he said, I die for Absalom too. It hurts me to send a man to hell to look like, according to your law, he deserved to go there. Let me cry for a minute. Because one day I ain't going to cry, you're going to be in hell. I'm crying now. It grieves me to send that boy to hell. That's David's son. It grieves me. Let me cry. But I understand. And this is what Joab, Joab said. The guy that worked for David said to the king. This is us talking to God. Now therefore arise. Go forth and speak comfortably unto your servants. Go in and talk to these folk, David. Get up out of that crying you're doing. Boy, I swear by the Lord, Joab said. If you don't get up, go forth. There will not tarry one of these this night. If you don't give us some evidence that you got our back, all of us going to walk out on you. You won't play that. And that would be worse unto you than all the evil that befell you from your youth until now. You thought you went through something. Let us walk away from you. All you are cried in. That's the flesh talk. If you don't get up and give me what I want, all of us will walk away from you. Then the king arose and sat at the gate. He got up. The word says that my spirit ain't going to always strive with you. I ain't going to always feel like crying like David did over Absalom. One of these days I'm going to get up. One of these days Jesus said, I'm sitting at that. I'm sitting beside my daddy, but one of these days I'm going to get up. I cry now. I plead now. I got I got people every day trying to tell y'all to go. Every single day they wake up. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. I need you to get up. Get up. Get up. Read the word, brother. Get up. Read the word. I got internet people coming out the woodwork. People get in my word. Get in my word because I'm telling you I'm crying now. But one of these days I'm going to get up and I'm going to sit at that gate. I ain't going to be crying. I got to get up. I hear Joel. Joab says, I'm giving you that I perceive. In all honesty, King, I perceive that you don't care nothing about us based on how you act. That's what I perceive. That's what the world perceives. That's what we see in our flesh. David got up and indicated that I will get up. He got up and arose and sat in the gate. And they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king does sit in the gate. Behold, he's here. He's at the gate. And all the people came before the king. For Israel had fled every man to his tent. So we're talking about the people that was with David came to where he was, but the ones that were with Absalom is back at the house. Them ten, them, all, most, of, most of them went back to the house. What is telling us? It, wait a minute, hold up. I'm just asking. We're we just talking. Could this be an indicator that the people that listened to the word of God finally got into the presence of God, but uh, most of them, a lot of the people that was a part of the a part of God's plan fled to their own house. Oh, big time Israel, 10, 10, 10 tribes. And they at the house. Could this be a portrait that a few of us, like he said, it's a big gate, a lot of folk, and then you got a, a narrow gate that only a few? Could it be? I'm just asking. And all the people were at the, and, 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 here, and this is, here we go. David's company who went with him while his son was after him, they are now sitting in his presence. The ones that was uh, uh, on the side of Absalom, who is now dead, fled. And when they fled, look at what happened while they did. This is, they still call Israel. Um, the people that was with David, they'll be referred to as Judah. And the people that was with Absalom will be referred to as Israel. So watch what Israel did. And this is how this chapter right here kind of unfolds itself. And all the people were 
at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel. So they went back home and they had strife. Absalom folk are confused. They mad. Why? The king, he said, look at, he said, he said, look at what we did. Look at the discussion that we're having. This is what David is not where they are. But this is a discussion that they're having away from David, thinking that Absalom was going to rule, but now it didn't work out like they thought. Now they got to deal with the president that we thought we were going to have. He's not president. Let's see what happened. And all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying all 10 tribes. He said, now this king right here, we're going to talk about David. This is what we, we missed out on. The king saved us out of the hand of our enemies. And he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. And now he's fled out of the land of Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead. Uh-oh. All of what we thought, it, it didn't work. Dead in battle. While he tried to fight, he died. And then they at home talk and said, Now therefore, why speak ye not a word of bringing the king back? What are we going to do? How are we going to get him back? How are we going to get him back? Can we, is there any way we can get him back? Look what we did to him. This is where we are in God when we know we went against his word, but God's still breathing on you saying, they are saying, at least, is there any way we can get him back? You don't know what it's got to do to humble yourself and get that man back after you tried to kill him? Will he come back? Knowing that what we did to betray him? Did Peter come back? Did the disciples that walked with him and, and when he needed them, did they come back? Is he gone for good? Y'all remember what we did? Are we worthy to call him king again? Will he recognize that we want him back? And Absalom, next verse. After they had the discussion, and King David sent to Zadok. Zadok is a preacher, a priest. And to Abathar, another priest. The priest said, speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, now go to my people, the people that stay with me. Why are you the last to bring back me to the house? David said, why y'all ain't calling me? Why is we not calling me, my people? Why y'all the last one to get it together? Y'all went with me. You saw me do. You saw me do all this stuff. You sat at the table with me. You hung. You, you, you didn't leave me. But why y'all, why do you folk that's a distance from me that walked away from me trying to get me back, but the people that's close to me? Why y'all ain't paying me no attention? Why y'all ain't trying to get me back in the position that I supposed to be in? Why are you that relaxed? Could it be God talking to Israel saying, I brought you out of Egypt. Why you ain't, why are you taking it for granted that I'm, stop, I'm not where I'm supposed to be in your life? Why are you the last to bring back to, the, to his house? Seeing the speech of Israel is come to the king. Even to his house. Even the people, the, the Gentiles don't call it at me. The Gentiles want me. The folk that left me, the, the folk that, that don't really know, didn't stay with me long enough to really see who I, what I can do. Even though they came to me, but they didn't stick with me, but they called to me, but you right there beside me. How can you, don't you know I'm supposed to be connected to the Ark of the Covenant? I'm over here in the word over there. I got to be, why, why my own people that's close to me ain't, ain't, ain't hooked me up to get me back to where I ought to be? Then he said this, ooh, check out the next verse. You are my brothers, David said. You are my bones and my flesh, Jesus said that. Jesus said, you my bones and you my flesh. You are you everything I am. I'm, I'm the one I love you the most. Why is the one that I love the most the one that don't care? None? Why is it that my kinfolk didn't know me? Why, why is it that if I call call my kinfolk and say, y'all, let's read the word, and they look at me like, so how come you, why, 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 why y'all don't have me included? 
I don't get it. You bones, you, we got the same mama. We got the same sisters, brothers. We got the same kind of nose, same kind of hair. You close to me. And you, why, why you won't let me be positioned where I'm supposed to be positioned? Why? And I got the folk that, didn't, that ran after me, killing me. They came to enough sense to say, I want you back. But you right there beside me, you don't even recognize I ain't supposed to be here. This is not my house. You are my brother. You are born of my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? Why is the church the last one to recognize I supposed to be in church? Why is it that we, why is it that the church won't let him in? Why is it we go to church every Sunday and don't nobody know that Jesus is supposed to be up in here? You got my name on the place. You got me on program. You know everything there is, but you'll never let me speak. I want to come back and own and be in the place I'm supposed to be in. And then you wonder why I cry over that one man. Because the ones that died in the midst of trying to understand what he was doing, I ain't so sure they lost. But the one that started all that mess, I would cry for him even though I know you lost your son, but your son's all right. It's my son. It's that son that I'll never see again. But I'm just asking y'all a question. If you related to me, how come I'm here and you know I'm supposed to be there? Why you won't let me in, in, in why you won't let me in the house? Why I had to shut the whole world down to get you on the internet so you can find somebody that's gonna talk about me? Can I come home? Can you get me back in? I went on the run, but I sent the word. I said, let me leave the word right there. I sent the Ark of the Covenant back because I was running with it. He said, no, I'll put the word back. Let it stand. If God said, if my word is there, you come back to it. I ain't going to never let you separate from my word. Just understand you go through some crazy stuff. Put the word back where it belongs. Because God said, I ain't running. He said, I'll never get in the flesh. Let me stay here. You do you. Just understand. Don't lose my zip code. You know where I be. You are my brothers. You are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore that then are ye the last to bring back the king. And you say to Amasa. Amasa is the one that was running with David. I mean Absalom's son. Trying to kill David. He said, and you go tell a master, are you not of my bones? Are you not related to me and of my flesh? God do so to me and more also if you be not captain of the host before, the, before me continually in the room of Joab. In other words, I'm getting ready to get rid of Joab. How, how, what is Jesus saying when he said, go get the man that was trying to kill me? And I want you to be the one that I want to put in charge. Because I know, even though you hooked up with my son and you were his captain over the army trying to kill me, I want you over here by me. Because I want you to take the place of Joab. Now, what is God said? Right here, it was like, this right here? Lord, what is you saying right here? Are you telling us that That the, that the one that's with me, Joab, the flesh. I told David, I told Joab to kill a man and I took his wife and he did it. And I was in my flesh. Joab was another man that took another man and killed him when he felt like he didn't want him to live. And he just took him behind some building and, sh and stuck the man and he died. Joab told me that if I don't get up out of the bed and come help this fight, he's going to name this city after him. I'm just telling Joab I'd rather have a man. 
Joel is my nephew. That's my sister's son. I'd rather get rid of you. Okay, I'll close you out of me. You don't want to do right. I'd rather have a man that I can tell something and that halfway would listen to me than have a man that's stronger than all of y'all and won't hear nothing I'm saying. I'd rather have somebody who I rather have somebody who said, Lord, I got I, I, I got two talents. Even if he don't have five. I don't want to be around Joel. Let him know I don't want to be near you and I ain't scared to say it. I'm saying it now and I'm not I'm not saying it behind his back. I'm just telling you I just want you to come in and let me deal with you. With And I know you got some issues, but Joel, I don't get him. I don't get that kind of spirit. I don't get a spirit when you could just take the law and just dig a hole in the man and then say, next, at least I can trust you, a master, because you did it because you were ignorant. But I can't deal with you when I told you not to do something. You do it anyway. I don't understand you when you see me down and then you tell me to get up because I need to go out here and put a performance on for the people that's acting. I, I, I'm grieving. And I understand that you write in what you say by what your perception is. But had you asked me, close as you were to me, you all right? If you just talk to me, you can do that. He said, I know you and your brother. My, my sister, I don't know, what, what your dad to teach y'all? What's your dad's name, Zariah? Start with a Z. Because you are a ruthless man. You don't give up. You don't care nothing about nothing. You don't care nothing about nobody grieving. You know I just lost my son. Give me somebody else to take your place. What, 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 what did, did, God, did Jesus ever do that? Give me somebody else. Who would that? Give me somebody that's going to do what I said. Because you puffed up. Oh, you got a big church. You got all this stuff. But you, you, you don't care about people. You don't care about people when they hurt. If they ain't put on a performance for you and making everybody else happy, you don't care about people. You don't understand what it's like to go through something. But you got that name. You got that name, then you don't talk with me. But today, I'm asking for somebody who I can help <laughs> that's weak and ain't got as much sense as you got. You perceive what you perceive, and you perceive like a lot of people. A lot of people agree with you. But the king is saying, as much as it seemed like he said, there is a way that seemed right unto a man, but that way will lead to destruction. Lean not to your own way of thinking, your own understanding. Joab represents us when we can prove that we're right. But our heart is not bleeding. Joab don't know that even when I was in my flesh, he should have stopped me and said, Dad, he's a man, man, don't do this man, don't do this man. And Joab stuck that man right in the middle of that ammunition and killed that man, knowing I wasn't, knowing I wasn't right. Read the letter, got the, and Joel was just waiting to hang me. So I'm going to get you one day, day, day. They're waiting on the right opportunity. I'm going to ride with you all the way. And people going to think that I got your back. And, 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 and David said, I can't stand you. <laughs> Communication that we don't see written, but we know it there. David said, get that man away from me. I'm not trying to be partial toward my son. Leave it in that, Joel. Give me some time. Give, give, give people a little time to, 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 to kind of get stuff when they don't understand exactly how. I, David, J David is like, Joel, do you know what I've been through? I done ran at least 20 years of my life waiting to solve. I for doing absolutely nothing wrong. Then I took another man's wife and slept with him and had the man killed. I, and God forgave me. He, he didn't, I could have died, but he said, no, I need you to roll this out. Because if 21 got, 2021 got to see what it's like to be you when I still let you live over the sins that you committed. It ain't going to be easy. Ask Abraham. Still got a son. Even 2021, 20, from the time the beginning of the earth, we still dealing with the, 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 the foolishness of Abraham. Ask Adam. He's a sin is expensive. Just because the new year changed, 
Don't mean that the germs of sin is not, it's not, it's not trying to become the disease of man. That's why we need a savior. Jesus said, I ain't dying for nothing. I got to die to get rid of this stain. David is doing what he can in the, as a human being to represent the, the hidden part of what Jesus said I did. I died for the man that was trying. In fact, y'all, it wasn't just one man trying to kill me. All y'all trying to kill me. And guess what? All y'all my relatives. But Joab is a good us. I know he's a good me. And now that I see what God rolling out with this thing. And he said, I want, I want to fire Joab today. Joab is as good as fire. Because <laughs> it's spoken. He is as good. I don't care how he roll it out. You are as good as silence. We don't know when. But when David spoke it, we're going to roll this thing out. We're going to stay with this word until we see how what happened to Joab. And he bowed the heart of all the men of Judah. Ooh, when they heard that he was gracious enough to let there, the guy that tried to kill him, and they say, you saved him? Then the entire 10 tribes of Judah said, I bow my knee to you. You understand exactly what we did to you. And you still said, Come on over here and reign with me. Them people fell down on their knees. If the world would see what Jesus really said, instead of us blocking the way, we so Joabish. We got things that we can prove. We got, we got things that you ought to be and you shouldn't be here. And we'll execute without a, a, we'll kill you and feel like we did it in the name of the word of God. That's the way Joab was. Flesh it, flesh it, flesh it. But when they saw that David said we would make a massa, a massa name a mess, a massa, he's a massa. <laughs> I like God when give me any name like that. He's a massa. I'd rather have a massa than a Joab. Oh, big bad Joab. No, you can knock a massa down in a, with a slingshot. But I still want a master to lead the people. I rather have a, I rather have a heart of a man who I know is trying. I know what you would do because I saw it. I, I rather have a man that would kiss me and I know you kissing me. God, I, I rather man, I, no, not kiss me. I rather have a man that would was would come at me and try to shoot me than a man that's right beside my side and you ain't got my heart at all. Give me that man right there. And let me they, they, come here, I'm not so bring your messy self here and be my leader over my arm. <laughs> I'd rather have a Bruno that, that mispronounce some words. Come on here, Bruno. Let me teach you how to be a captain over an army. Come on here, old messer. And he bowed the hearts of all the men. Just that one move that David made, made 10 tribes say, we bow down to you. Because the heart truly of the church, the truth about us, we don't want to go to hell. We'll backslide, but the truth about us, if you found that much grace to allow us that tried to kill you, and then you make us leader, you raise us up and put, give us a name, we bow down to you. Because we know we low down. All the men of Judah, even as the heart of one man, the same group that tried to come to kill, they all got together and said, not one of them spoke out of turn. We want David back. Give us Jesus. Give us somebody who will connect us back to the Father. After doing all of what we know we did and you still call one of us and you raised one of us. I, what, we, we, we the one that had you run up and down that, 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 without your shoes on. And then you're going to let the man that started this mess that, that outlived the one your son started, but the man that said, I carry the plan to make sure you get what's done. And you said, come, be, come and lead my people. That means anybody can be saved. Them folks said, one man, 
All of us are showing up. So that they sent this word. They sent this word. They told, they said, go tell David, return thou. <laughs> and all your servants. Bring you and all, everybody. Come back, David. Come back, come back. Come, come be with us. Come to us. Come back to us. Who loves us like that so much so? That I know I ain't about nothing. I know I was talking behind your back. Come on back. And whoever that connected to you, bring them back with you. Bring you and the angels and everybody, all y'all. Bring the whole staff of God back. This was the, this was the backslidden church was saying. That admitted that if you can raise us up and, lead, and, 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 and want us a part of your plan, come back to us. Come back and Lord Jesus, come back again. Come back to us again. We did you so wrong. We have not read your word. We tried to kill everybody that would bring your word. We tried to do everything that we could, God. If you will come back to us, what kind of love is that that you will still draw us? And not only draw us, but make us ahead, put us ahead, make us help, put us right beside you, and you know we're weak. Lord, come back to us. You get what he did? You asked. So the king returned and came to Jordan. <laughs> and Judah came. Judah was with him. That's the people that never left him. And Judah came to Gilgal to go meet the king, to conduct the king over Jordan, to help or aid him. Let's get you back to where you're supposed to be. Where's that word? Get him back to the word. That's what a real king does. <laughs> when I get off this thing today, my face, my face will be before God. So the king returned and came to Jordan and Judah came to Gilgal to go. He said, them, them folks said, bring back Judah. You come back, make us one again. You my kind of king. You my kind of king. You're, you're our leader. And on his way back, guess who he met? Look at the Christ. Look at who he met. And Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjamite, which was a Beharim, hastened and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David, who was Shimei. When David was running from his son, Shimei came. You mother! Look at your blood! Because David out through rocks here. And he the first one that run toward David. After he saw David coming back to get the place that he thought David was never would never see again. And the enemy of David is the first one. Let's see that read this, read all about him. And Shimei, the son of Gera, Benjamite, which was a Beharim, hasted and came down to the men of Judah to meet King David. And there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him. He wasn't lonely. He had a group of people with him. Cussing him out, throwing rocks. And Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul. This is the guy that worked. God, we need this word so I don't have to go back and just read all of this. It's so rich. Shimei came, saw him. Ziba, the servant of Saul, who was now the servant of Mephibah, said we're going to get to him. And his 15 sons and his 20 servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king. And all these folk coming back. But watch your eyes on Shimei. And there went out a ferry boat. They had a ferry boat to carry over the king's household. They got some stuff. Everything God is saying, you go back and get back in the place, you ought to be able to meet your need. But in the midst of meeting your need, some of them folk that did you wrong, they got to, uh-oh, see what happened. They brought a ferry boat and to do what he thought good. And there went over a ferry boat to carry the king's household and to use it as he thought good. And Shimei, back on Shimei. Shimei was the big time mouthpiece that was cussing David out and throwing rocks at him and just calling him all, doing all kinds of stuff. And they said, David, one of them soldiers said, David, can I go ahead and chop that man's head off? David said, no, the Lord has permitted it so. He said, perhaps if I, don't, if I shut my mouth up, then God will give me favor. Let it be a seed that he's sowing. And if I be quiet, I'll get the increase. 
Because God has shown me how to behave myself when my enemy is cussing me out. And I got the power to let you go ahead and chop his head off. But Jesus said, no. I ain't finna kill Judas. If they have the Judas, Judas do it to himself. I knew he was the son of perdition. I knew he was the son of the enemy. I knew what he was doing. I ain't gonna have to kill nobody. If Judah's gonna die, it's gonna be by his own. I ain't gonna do it. In fact, I'm gonna give him some sop. You want something to eat, Judas? And then you're gonna be the one that's gonna kill me. But anyway, where did old Shimei at? And there went over a ferry boat, and Shimei and the son of Gera fell down before the king as he was come over Jordan. Ain't you shame? But look at David. That's how, that's how, now I'm acting like Joy up now. I know you shame not. No, but that's not how Jesus was. That's not how David was. David said, bro, I ain't got that kind of hard, God. And he said unto the king, uh-oh, who you talking to? And he said unto the king, uh-oh, let not my Lord impute iniquity on me. Neither do you, do not remember what I did to you. And neither do y'all remember that which the servant did perversely the day that my Lord the king went out on of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. He said, please, king. He said, do, do you know I'll cuss you out and I throw them rocks at you and I was spitting at you. I did all that stuff. But you please don't remember that. <laughs> you the king. Shimei is that kind of guy that I'll follow you if you the one that's in leadership. And then if you come back and you win after I messed up, at least I'm I, at least I come back to you. I ain't, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I was wrong when I was wrong. But now that I know I'm wrong, can you forgive me? For your servant does not know that I have sinned. For your servant does know that I have sinned. It take a man to say that. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day. I'm the first one to come back. I ain't, I ain't waiting. I ain't waiting. I'm, I'm coming back to you. Will you please? Out of the house of Joseph to go down to meet my Lord, the king. I thought about it. I ain't been able to rest since they told me you were coming back. <laughs> But Abishai, the same guy that said, I kill him on his way, said to, said to David, this Joel brother. But Abishai, the son of Zerah, answered and said, shall not Shimei be put to death? Can I go and kill him now? You ain't let me kill him with all that cousin. Please let me have his head now. Shall not Shimei be put to death for this because he cursed the Lord's anointed? Can I go and kill him now? And David said, what have I to do with you? What, 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 what did God, what did Jesus say to the devil when Peter was speaking? What, what, what you talking about? The Lord rebuke you. You ain't saying the things of God. What have I to do with you? Look at God. Look at the word of God speaking. I ain't here to kill nobody. I don't get no glory while y'all talking about, what, you know, you know, a uh, karma coming. You know, um, you, girl, you better, you better, you, all the stuff that we say to God. He said, what, I don't, ain't got to do that. In fact, all y'all hurt me. But I like the fact that he got sense enough to come back and recognize he did wrong. I know he did wrong. And David said, what have I to do with you, you son of Zariah? He should have said, you son. I can't say what he should have said. He said, you son of Zariah. Zariah must have been a bad man because he had three sons that were just hard to deal with. That you should this day be adversaries unto me. He said, why are you coming against me? I ain't changed because the situation changed. I ain't no weather changing person. I don't change with the weather. I know this guy. I don't want this guy to go to hell. I'm trying to kill everybody that do me wrong. Shall there any man be put to death this day in Israel? Are you, you understand who's here? I'm, I'm coming back to the word. For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Don't you know I got my position back? Why am I fighting over something I got back? I never lost it anyway. It felt like I did. At one time I got in my, I didn't know. But I'm back now. I got, I'm back where I ought to be. Why I want to kill somebody and I got to, I accomplished the thing that I would, went, that I supposed to have. That God already said is mine. You think I'm going to kill somebody today? I don't kill people for nothing. Therefore the king said unto Shimei, now he's talking to the man that's begging for his life. You shall not die. That's enough right there. You shall not die. You deserve it. You shall not die. And the king swear on him. I give you my word. That's it. I'm done with that. And you think he sat there and said, you're going to be okay? Uh -uh. He said, like we said, you're going to be okay. Uh -uh. It's another part of He got to keep moving. 
You got to tell people the truth and keep it moving. We don't need to hear, tell us what the word says and keep it moving. Don't pet us. We're not, we're human. We made for the word. But we so busy being in leadership trying to make sure that you, you ain't going to die. You know, you do. I got to just tell you what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to bless you. He said, you ain't going to die. And this is on page 559. 2 <laughs> Samuel 19, verse 23. Then the king kept walking. So we got Shimei. Just as sure. If there's anybody that the king mentioned, made mention of. Gotta be careful that you don't have to walk back into what you, what they say. Don't, what you walked over, don't, don't. Anyway, you gotta come back and see these folk that you, that stepped on you. But let's see about, it. here's Mephibosheth. Because he mean all he needs. And Mephibosheth, said the son of Saul, came down to meet the king. And he was mustard. And he had neither dressed his feet, nor trimmed his beard, nor washed his clothes from the day of the king, from the day the king departed until the day he came again in peace. Mephibosheth said, is Jonathan's son, David's best friend's son, who's crippled in his feet. And David had asked Ziba when he brought all that food and stuff up there. He said, Where, where's Mephibosheth? said? Ziba said, he said, well, I'm going to tell you what he told me. He told me that uh, he going to be king. And since you gone, he going to do what he got to do to get his place back. That was, that was, that was Ziba said. And, Z and, and David said, you can have all this stuff. That David as a man. David made a decision that God said, out of two witnesses, let every word be established. But being at the fact that David was tired, and he told, um, he told Zyber to go and take the stuff that, if you know, he didn't even question whether you're telling the truth. He was like, he ain't, bottom line, I don't see you. And you telling me that's what he said. He's not here to defend himself. So all the stuff that I gave him, you can have. And I ain't got time to be dealing with that boy. I don't care about him being crippled. <laughs> That's me talking there. All right, so here go my fever said. He came there and he was musty and all that stuff because he hadn't took no bath or nothing since David been gone. Well, the word didn't say musty. I just kind of gathered it up. And it came to pass when he was come to Jerusalem to meet the king, my fever said, that the king said unto him, Wherefore once not thou with me? My fever said, How come you can come follow me? Why you go with me? I want to hear your side of the story. My fever said, Tell me, why, why you ain't show up to me? I ain't, being crippled wasn't no excuse. You're a grown man. Why you ain't show up? You ain't had to walk. You had a mule. <laughs> he did. And then what he said. And he answered, my Lord, O king, my servant deceived, my old Ziba deceived you about me. And he answered, my Lord, O king, my servant deceived me. He was my servant. He told you, allow me. But your servant said, I will sell me an ass that I may ride thereon and go to the king because your servant is lame. He said, he told me he going to give me a ride. And he had slandered. He said, I'm going, wait, let me read the 26. And he answered, my Lord, O king, my servant deceived me. For your servant said, I will sell me an ass that I may ride thereon and go to the king because that servant is lame. In other words, he said, you, 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 you too crippled to ride with us. I'm going to get my own ass, and I'm going up there to see the king. And you stay here. I ain't got time to be fooling with you. <laughs> that was, that was, this was, but she, my fever said, said, Ziba did. And he had lied. He had slandered my servant unto you, my lord, the king. But my lord, the king is an uh, angel of God. I know you, I know you hear from God. Do therefore what is good in your eyes. If you don't believe me, do what you got to do. Because one thing I know, I ain't lying. For all my father's house were but dead men before you came along, king. You did that with your servant among them that did. Oh, Lord. Yet did you set me among them that did eat at your table. You let me eat at your table. What right therefore have I yet to cry anymore unto the king? Why would I come to you? And you know that my whole house is dead. I ain't got a relative still alive. And you let me come in and sit at your table and eat. And the king said unto him. Stop talking. Don't talk no more about this matter. I have said you and Ziba divide the land. 
And Mephibosheth said unto the king, yeah, let him take all of it. I don't want none of it. For as much as my Lord, the king has come again in peace unto his own house. He said, I don't want none of that stuff that boy got. Now there are in articles and in, in commentaries, most of us believe, and I believe that, that Mephibosheth was telling the truth. But how David Hamlet was, I don't know. I'm going to give you half and give him half. I don't want to talk about it no more. Because one thing I've learned is being king. Y'all some lying folk. <laughs> Boy, your theatricals, I don't know. So when I don't know, I don't want to talk about it. That's the human part of me, sis David. <laughs> don't you let nobody cripple. Don't you cut them folk that came in there to um uh um uh, uh who that boy um that after Moses what's that boy name after Moses died ju, 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 what that boy name I got to look his name up Joshua them folk came to Joshua and told me oh we've been traveling a long time oh they were smart with that word he said shoot but I ain't finna get caught up with this I don't want to talk about this no more. I don't know whether you tell the truth or that boy to get what I'm going to do. Next, next verse. He left that alone. So whenever you don't know for sure what's what, you ain't got to try to prove nothing. I think I believe you because you handicapped and you look all dirty and you must and stuff. David said, all I know is you, you ain't show up. And you talking now and you got this good, you you talking. But you can have half and he can have half. And let God deal with it. I ain't trying to deal with it. I got other business matters. I got other matters. All right, and Mephibosheth said unto the king, yeah, let him take all, for as much as my lord the king has come again in peace unto his own house. I, you know, I'm just saying, David, I just kind of believe Mephibosheth, but that just mean, that my flesh, that just mean, brother. David said, brother, I'm through with that. All right, okay, David, let's move on. And Barzilla, Barzilla, the Gileadite, came down from Ragilam. All this stuff David had to deal with after he got invited back home by his whole, all the children of Israel. He had to confront this stuff as a leader. And he dealt with each one of them individually. He dealt with uh, Shimei. He dealt with um, Mephibosheth. Now he's going to deal with the, this right here. And Barzilla the Gileadite came down from Ragilam and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. He said, I'm going to ride with you. David, hold on. I can't walk as fast as you walk. But you hold on. I'm coming. Now, Barzilla was a very aged man, even 80 years old. And he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mahanam, for he was a very great man. When David then was hungry, that man said, let, let somebody to give me a ride up there. I want to drop off some food and some beds and somewhere they could use the bathroom and wash their hands and stuff. And uh, I want to take this over here to David. And David didn't forget that. God said, I ain't going to never forget your labor of love. Your labor. Your labor of love. That you found me. And you fed me. I was on that road and everybody walked by me and, and you traveled as an old man. And you came to feed me and my people. Look at Jesus. I ain't forgot that. And the king said unto Barzillia, come, you, come on with me. You ain't too old to travel with me. And I will feed you with my, I'll let you eat at the table in Jerusalem. And Basila said unto the king, he said, oh, oh, bro, David, you're so nice to me. How long have I lived? I ain't going to live that much longer, David. I'm 80 years old. That I should, you know what we do to old people? The older I get. You don't do this. But I look at you with all that word inside of me. And part of me try to act like Joe. <laughs> Can't be like Joel. Because I was like, oh, you know what I do sometimes? I come home and type a letter to your manager to let them know. I don't play that. I, it wasn't time for me to discuss it. But you can't stop me from writing your name down and what time we talking. I got the receipt. <laughs> and Barzilla said unto the king, how long have I to live that I should go with you, the king, unto Jerusalem? He said, I'm 80 years old, and I can, I, he said, I can't discern between good and evil. I don't know what's pretty and what ain't. <laughs> K 
Can your servant taste it? I lost my taste. I ain't got the same taste I had when I was a young man. When I was 79, I could taste pretty good. I'm 89. What I eat, he said, I can't taste what I eat or what I drink. Now, that's not all 80 years old, but this was Barzillai. Can I hear? I can't hardly hear, boy. Why you want me to come with you? I ain't going to be nobody. No, I ain't going to say that. Can I hear any more of the voice of singing men and singing women? I can't hardly hear. Wherefore, then should my servant be yet a burden unto my Lord the King? Yeah, I ain't, I ain't trying to. But look, David, I'm telling you, you have me with you, you're going to have a problem. I ain't lying to you. I ain't scared to tell you the truth. I can't walk that fast. I can't hear that good. My taste ain't good. And I can't stand everybody cooking. <laughs> He said, your servant would go a little way over Jordan with the king. And why should the king recompense it means with such a reward? He said, I didn't do that for you to give me nothing back. He said, I wasn't trying to get you no know, favor with you. I just who I am. Some people just good. They like folk like you. And I'm one of them. I'm old, but I, 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 I do what I do. You owe me a thing. I'm a, I got a lot of stuff, Dave. You need something yourself? No. Your servant would go a little way over Jordan with the king, and why should the king recompense it me with such a reward? He said, I tell you what, David. I tell you what you can do. Let your servant, I pray you, turn back again that I may die in my own city. I don't really want I don't want to die over no strange land over there. I know the, I know my I know my neighborhood. And be buried at the grave of, of my father and my mother. But do me a favor, David. Can I get a favor from him? He said, But behold, your servant, Chiham. Let him go over with my Lord, the king, and do to him what you want to do for me. Do that for my boy. I got a son. Can he come over there with you? I know he's been looking for a job. You hire him. David said, and the king answered, Chim shall go over with me. Tell him I got him on my payroll right now. Tell him, come on. See, God will bless somebody because of your goodness. He said, I'll run it down your family. I'll let you sit at the king's table just because you were good to me. And I know you're going to want to come home to see me soon, uh, Barzilla. He said, but let me bless your son. He said, bring him on. You ask me, it's done. And the king answered, Shimei, I sh shall go over with me, and I will do to him which shall seem good unto you. And whatsoever you shall require of me, that will I do for your boy. I ain't, I ain't going to cut no corners. I know you the one that climbed and got all that food together, but I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless your son. It's going to be blessing. All of what you did is make... Davis, I got that kind of memory. If you do me some good, I'm going to do your child some good. I'm going to be looking out for your folk. When we do right, do you not know that the vein of the goodness that we show runs out all the way down through our children, their children, their children? It'll bless them. If you pray, then you don't know how many people in your household are going to be blessed because that one man, he proved it, Abraham. He proved it, my son. A one man. Then the king said, I'm done with that. Got that, that check. I got the I got the people under control. Check. I done forgave my enemies. Check. And I blessed the one that was good to me. Check, check. He's gonna get double blessing. Double blessing. Then the king went on. He said, I got I right, come on, we got that business straight. He, he, David is a busy man. This is God's heart right here. I, child, God is teaching me as I try to say what I'm saying. Then the king went on to Gilgal, and Shimeon went on with him. So he proved that I'm going, and your son is going with me. And all the people of Judah, so all the people that came that left. But check out what happened. Check out what's going on. Conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. So they moving on, just moving on. But always remember, we still alive on earth. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king. So now the ten tribes came to the king and said to David the king, why have our brothers, the men of Judah, stolen you away? How come you ain't called us and let us know you? Uh-oh, uh, uh, there go that flesh. The one that said we'll bow down to you. You're still on earth. David, why is it that you just got Judah all, all their t-shirts on and got on none of our t-shirts? The church started fussing again. Uh-oh. And they brought the king. Why you let them just come around? Why you ain't call us and his household and all David's men with him over Jordan? How come you ain't let us know you were coming? I mean, we, we know you were coming, but why you ain't let us be a part of the parade? You go to church talking again. You just got saved. How you starting that stuff again? Jesus said, because I got to come. <laughs> 
David had problems. Lord have mercy. I'm just not getting back to town. Here y'all come out. Well, Lord have mercy. Help us. And all the men of Judah answered the men. Of, no, no, David. We got this. We got this, David. We got this. We got this. We got this, David. You ain't got to say nothing. We, you ain't got to say a word. I've been waiting to get them anyway. Uh-oh, the fight fighting the church again. You know, brought Jesus back in the house, and now you try to take over. Oh, Lord, when we going to get it together? He said, when I come. <laughs> he says, as much as I done straight now, y'all still need me. You know, brought me all the way back to town, start another fight. Oh, Lord, have mercy. See how this thing is. This word is so God. And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel. Now the two, the, the two foes. Ten to two. Back at it. Oh, we got the word back in the house. Oh. We finna fight again. Oh, 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 oh. And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, because the king is near, he our kin. He close to us. He kin or he the same tribe we is. But now, that's why we brought him back. Uh oh, flesh. Choir members, because you know the pastor called me last night, told me he want me to sing this solo. She trying to take that solo away from me. Oh Lord, as, as good as God is to you, you still got something to fight about. Jesus said, Lord, David said, come Lord. <laughs> and all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel because the king is near kin to me. Well, uh, that's my dad. That's my dad. That's my uncle. That's my sister. That, that we got the same mama. We got that, that's my dad's sister. We fight over everything. Because the king is near of kin to us, wherefore then be ye angry for this matter? You know that's our, that's my that's my nephew. Have you eaten at all the king's cost? Have we eaten? Did the king pay for our our uh, golden corral meal? We ain't asked him to pay for no. He we bought our own meal first and before he can get to the house. Or have he given us any gifts? He we we ain't asked him to do that. We just we just walking with him. And here y'all trying to start something. And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, brothers talking, and said, We had ten pot. It ten of us. Simeon, I mean not Simeon, Simeon with you. Reuben, Gad, Nephilim, Asher. I'm just trying to call all of them, man. Can't call all of them. Anyway, I'm gonna make me a song so I can remember all of them guys' name. And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah and said, We have ten parts of the king. We got ten times many folk that related to him than you. Because our daddy be, oh, what's our daddy's name? <laughs> Israel, Jacob. You got all the brother, but I can't stand you. We have 10 parts in the king, and we, you, and, and we have more right in David than you. Fight him again. Who, who would have known that this story in chapter 19 going to end like this? Because God said, keep a reading. Keep a read. I want you to read all the way to Jesus come, because you're going to see some stuff. Ah! We have more right to David than you. Why then did you despise us? He said, because I'm going to tell y'all something. We want to be a part of the parade. We want everybody in 2020 to know we helped, and y'all want a little help. Fighting over help. That our advice should not be first. Had bring, he said, uh-oh, wait a minute. We have 10 parts in the king. And we have also more rights in David than you. Why then why you despise us that our advice should not be first had in bringing back our kid? We want to carry his suitcase. We want to drive his car. We want to fix him something to eat. We want to carry his luggage. We got 10 times more than y'all. Boy, you look just like my granddaddy. <laughs> they be careful. And the words of the men of Judah... The small tribe were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. When they came back at them, it must have been a fight going on. How in the world you'll bring Jesus right back up into the way you want him to be? And you fighting for he can even sit down and take a seat. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how good God's word is. If we ain't getting his word like this, what is we feeding off of? We can't fight no enemy without all this. Because what we can do here is identify ourselves in here. And when God said that David was a man after my own heart, look at what God got to go through with us. I love y'all, but I got to go. I ain't had nothing to eat. Talk to you later. Bye.